Qatar established itself to be the world leader in natural gas monetization uh, by building one of the world's largest existing natural gas monetization facilities. They are number one global-wise in the area of uh, liquefied natural gas, but also they built the world's largest gas to liquid technology. But unfortunately, at the same time, that come with a heavy cost when we consider the emissions coming from those plants per capita. And Qatar become the major producer of CO2, and they are aware of this problem, and they committed themselves in COP18, that's held in Doha, to handle this problem from the capture to the sequestration level. Dry reforming technology is one of the most sought out uh, CO2 conversion processes. In this reaction, CO2 and uh, CH4, these are the two greenhouse gases, they react to form syngas. However, in this reaction, solid carbon is formed and it is a big challenge. It deactivates the catalyst. Also, it is highly endothermic in nature um, and the syngas that is produced is not compatible with the downstream applications. So we were able to find a breakthrough technology by which we were able to address these challenges. To put it simply, we'll collect the CO2 emissions from the industrial infrastructure of Qatar along with methane. It will be then sent to the first reactor, which is the carbon generator reactor, and will process these greenhouse gases to produce carbon nanotubes. And then the post carbon reaction gases will be then sent to the dry reforming reactor in which syngas is formed. And this syngas is then sent directly to GTL industry. The first step is dedicated towards carbon formation, and the second step is dedicated towards the syngas formation. When we started running these simulations and the results started coming in, we realized something was really different. We noticed that the amount of carbon dioxide that was being consumed by the carbon process was significantly better than the dry reforming of methane process. So we decided to run the experiment in a very small scale, let's say 20 to 30 milligram of the catalyst. The point here is that we wanted to monitor the mass gain during the reaction at the same time, we wanted to monitor the evolving gas from the reaction. When we tested the material, we found high purity, multi wall carbon nanotube. Carbon nanotubes are amazing material that have a variety of applications and have very significant market demand. In order to fully validate our process, we also have to conduct a life cycle assessment to know if the carbon footprint is higher or it's lower. If the net CO2 that's coming out of a process is more than the amount of CO2 that's going in, the process is not carbon friendly, it's not eco friendly. The thing that makes Cargen exciting is it's 50% less energy intensive than the standard DRM process, while at the same time it utilizes 60%, at least 60% of CO2 per pass. And we found out that in terms of carbon footprint, the Cargen process is about 40% lesser when you compare it to industrial benchmarks like partial oxidation. It cost 40% cheaper to operate it as a plant. This has never been done before in the field of dry reforming technology. It's a brand new technology, it's a brand new invention, and because of its uniqueness in this uh, area of CO2 utilization, we were able to patent it very quickly with the help of Qatar Foundation support. The research is gaining a lot of interest. This is really addressing and challenge that the, the global community is trying to address. That gave us a lot of confidence that yes, the technology that we invented was scalable and we wanted to scale it up further. So Qatar will be a major producer, not only in terms of ultra clean fuels and value added chemicals from natural gas, but it can also be a major producer of high quality carbon material and carbon material in general. And it will be a model for CO2 sequestration global wise. This work has been done in a unique collaboration model with Qatar National Research Fund and my colleague at Texas A&M University, Professor Mahmoud al Hawani and his research team. And it shows the leadership uh, that this institution of gas and fuel research center of Texas A&M working to cover technology development from the micro scale all the way up to the macro scale, looking at the problem of developing a catalyst, developing a process, and then also developing a final product that's unique in characteristics and marketing value.